Hey everyone, welcome to West Coast Muscle Saws. I'm going to be looking up some spark plugs, looking at spark plugs today, and I just want to show you a few things I learned over the years working on chainsaws. There's many varieties, heat ranges, all kinds of aspects to the simple spark plug. Uh, basically, they're not so simple. There's a lot of stuff to them, and we're going to cut one apart, a couple of them, and do some comparisons. But first, let's go over some basic information. I used to get this all the time, questions of hot, hot plug, cold plug, different ideas. Let me show you something here. There's a range where you want to be in your spark plug, either the, you want to be in the self-cleaning zone, and uh, if you get a spark plug that burns too hard, temperature is too hot, you get self-ignition, or it's a high-frequency uh, pre-ignition and can cause all kinds of issues with your engine with the spark with the spark plug and even with the cylinder you'll get some hairline cracks going everywhere and then there's the issue with the cold and you get deposits we couldn't figure out year for years on some of the steels why they were getting little balls on the electrodes and it was just a matter of not quite the right heat zone you want to be in that nice blue range there which is around 450 somewhere 450, 550, 6, somewhere in that zone heat range. And uh, <clears throat> the design of the plug will tell you what it is. A hot plug, you can see this electrode in the middle here, insulator, how it goes way up here before it contacts the actual metal of the spark plug, making it hard to transfer heat. So the temperature here is just going to spike, go way up. An example is if you built a high performance chainsaw up to compression ratio, did all the trick work on it, it's going to run hotter anyway. So if you have the idea of I want a hot plug for my hot chainsaw, you're going to create all kinds of problems. You would actually want a little colder plug, which would be this one over here. And you can see the electrode and the porcelain material here, how close, how quickly it gets to the metal transferring that heat, running a little colder. Of course, You've got to play with them a little bit to get the right one by reading your spark plugs. And by reading your spark plugs, you're looking at the... If you take the pl spark plug out, you're looking at this, and you can... All kinds of information you can get off by the color. If there's uh, deposits on it, if it's starting to melt a little bit. I mean, there's all kinds of information. We'll go over a little bit of that. Hang on here a second. I used to do this a lot to uh, check the spark plugs for uh, different things going on. And you know, one of these things, don't try it at home, you might hurt yourself. But uh, what I did without hurting myself was to, there's several ways you can do it. Put the spark plug, an old one, if you want to look at it. Take you a hacksaw or die cutter. And you just cut the outer ring here. Which I've already done on this one. I cut this ring. You can go over there so you can see it. Cut that outer ring, and now this will just come right out, and we'll take a look at it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. These are uh, one of the outfits I uh, know of. They're, it's called HIPAA. I don't get paid for any of this. Uh, they do send me some of their products to test, and that's what I'm doing on this. I've tested some of their carburetor stuff, and it was very good. And also some of their uh, fuel lines and things. I've had real good success with the HIPAA, and their price-wise, there's no comparison compared to the HIPAA manufacturers. Fraction of the cost, and it seems to be very good quality. Anyway, we're we'll looking at the HIPAA, HIPAA plug is what we're looking at right here. And you can see there's a little, little metal gasket there, and that's to keep this sealed. And over here again. A little metal piece there. Seats right inside there before they press this all together. And seal it. It is possible that you can get high compression blowing by this here and you'll actually have some exhaust gases going by and I've, on this one here this is a 
manufacture a different one. I uh, won't give the name out, but anyway, it's a very popular one that you guys see all the time. You can see how it's been blown by. That, that the hot exhaust browning that electrode there, or that porcelain, excuse me. A couple different configurations on these plugs. You can get the solid cap or the thread on. I've had issues with both over the years. I've had these vibrate out. Of course, the guys wouldn't change their plug like they really should. Truthfully, plugs do last a long time, but some of my timber cutters, they wouldn't look at their plug, never look at it, take it out and clean it or do anything for maybe two, three months, running at six hours a day. I've had them, had them loosen up, blow the threads out on the cylinder head. Um, I've had them actually separate. I mean, they would bring it in and this was loose in here from the vibration. These were gone. I've had the wire inside the plug cap broken. But they were out there using their saw every day trying to make money. And of course, they didn't want to mess with taking time to examine them. And they'd bring them in occasionally to the shop. And then we'd find the, these issues and take care of them, of course. This is a resistor plug. Both of these are resistors, and the resistor is in the center part. And on these new electronic ignitions, it's real critical that you have the resistor, otherwise you can damage the ignition or possibly some of your, your engine components not firing properly like it should. And then also we're going to break this apart. This one here. Now this one's got the washer on it as well, a little seal. Some of them have two seals in there, and they're real important to try to keep that from losing uh, the compression and then really heating the plug up, of course, more than it needs to be. We're going to wrap this. Another thing, don't try at home. We're going to wrap this one in some oil rag, and we're going to break it apart. And, of course, we're going to do this with our safety glasses on. Put your safety glasses on if you're watching me. See if we can take a look at that resistor. see here okay nice kind of damaged it but anyway there's a resistor right there it's real critical on your high performance chainsaws to do that and just remember guys when you're doing your high performance chainsaws a hotter engine doesn't need necessarily a hotter plug what you need to do is run it you know if you've got a load tester I had a load tester I could uh, Put the chains on my load tester and you know run it for an hour two hours thinking and it would think it was under a tremendous load i could crank it down to where it would really make that saw work and get it hot and then you can actually shut it down let it cool and then look at that spark plug and look and see what's going on here and gauge you can usually gauge by that if you got the correct plug but anyway you just need to do some testing as far as changing plugs you used to get this question a lot, how long does a spark plug last? Well, until a major breakdown, you don't want that. Plugs do last a long time, but they start deteriorating, so you really should change your plug at least once a month, and you probably should check it every night after running it. You really want to check it to make sure the torques are it's torqued in right, and these do need to be torqued in. That washer is crushed, collapsed when you first put the spark plug in, and so you want to make sure that it's snug and don't be unscrewing it, screwing it back in, unscrewing it, screwing it. You can still check the torque without unscrewing it. But if you're going to check it out and check to see how it's running, of course, you probably should replace the plug. A lot of guys don't do that, but that's what that crush washer is for. Make sure it seals tight and then uh, make sure that you're not leaking. Another good little test here is to see how good this grounding tang is. Bend it back and forth, see how long it takes to break. Twelve times, approximately. 
Rogar. I've seen those go through engines and they just wreck an engine. Okay, this is the HEPA here. This is it. And this is the test. We're going to see if it holds up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Pretty equal. Well, guys, if you have any questions, you know how to go with the chainsaw guy. And as far as the HEPA plug, it appears to be just fine. I would give it a pass. And uh, if, you, like I said, you want to do some of this, be very careful. You're dealing with porcelain or very sharp parts here. But you can have a lot of fun and check out your spark plugs and see how they're working. Until next time, guys, have a great day.